Shalom everybody, we're going to do the, um, the counting of the Omer for today. Baruch Ata Yehua Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Atsher Kitshanu Bemitzvota, Vitzivanu Al Sefirat HaOmer, Hayom Yom Tesha. Blessed are you, Yehua Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day nine. Amen, praise Abba Yehua. So we continue with our reading of the book of Jeremiah, who so powerful to be able to work through this book. And last night, we decided that we'd watch the movie of Jeremiah, who there is a, a movie of Jeremiah. And I really encourage you, if you are really wanting to watch something that is going to open up your eyes to just understand what Jeremiah actually went through. You know, I think it brings a different perspective because, you know, here we just see a man, you know, we're just reading, but we don't have the understanding of how difficult it really was for Jeremiah and what did he go through. And so I've seen um, the movie many times, but yesterday I decided to go and um, you can actually watch it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. And um, and so last night we decided to watch it. And wow, it was such a blessing, especially now that we are reading through it. I think it will be a very good idea to watch it so that you're going to get a better understanding as you read it to understand what were the kind of people that he was up against what was going on in that time? What did he have to suffer? And what was the rebellion and the stubbornness of the people? And especially the stubbornness of the king. And so let us read tonight chapter 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah saying, Hear the words of this covenant and speak to the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem." You see, this is what we must understand. There has been a covenant, a covenant that was given from the beginning. And the father is a father of covenant. The father is not a father of religion. The father is not a father of our works to please him. The father is a father of covenant. And that covenant is the Shema of obedience. And you shall say to them, Thus said a Yehua Elua of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, which I am command, which I commanded your fathers in the day when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and you shall do according to all that I command you, and you shall be my people, and I be your alua, in order to establish the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. As it is in this day, I answer and said, Amen. Amen, Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Yehuda, in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly warned your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Mitzrayim until this day, rising early and warning, saying, Obey my voice. So if we read um, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, in Deuteronomy chapter 11 is a very powerful chapter for us to be able to read where he really lays out the promises that he's got for them if they are to obey him and if they are to obey his voice, what he will do for them in the land and how he will give them water to drink and how they will live in the land and how the land will prosper. But if they do not obey him in the land, if they do not obey his commands, then they will not have rain on their land and then the land will, will, uh, there will be a curse that will come upon the land. And so, you see, we have this idea that we can just continue to do whatever we want, but we must understand everything is about covenant. And this is not about a set of rules. This is about your marriage contract. You know, when he 
brought them onto Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19, he made a covenant with them and he said, if you will obey my voice, if you will keep my commands, then you will be a people, a set-apart people, a holy priesthood unto me. So it's always been the Father's will. It's always been the Father's part of his plan to have a covenant people, a people that he could call his chosen people, a people that he could call his set-apart people. But you see, unfortunately, listen to what he says in verse 8. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but everyone walked in the stubbornness of his evil heart. So I brought on them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, and they did not do. You see, each man does what they think is right in their own eyes, and this is exactly where we are. We are exactly like it was in the book of Judges, when they didn't have a leader, when they didn't have anybody to lead them. And Moses had handed over to Joshua. Joshua had led the people, but once Joshua died, there was nobody to lead the people. And so therefore the people just continued rebelling and then he rose up judges. And so we are exactly in that time where each man does what they think is right in their own eyes because what I can't understand, there's only one Ruach HaKodesh, but this one gets this and this one gets that and it's just so confusing because who's right and who's wrong, but the Ruach speaks by one mouth. He doesn't speak contradictory messages. He can't say one thing to the one person and another thing to another person. He can't be speaking to some prophet's peace and then other prophet's destruction because that can't be. And if you see in the movie, you will understand that this is exactly what Yahweh was up against. He was one of the only ones. He was the only one except for Baruch that came and joined him, speaking up against the people. But you see, we want to prophesy things that, that at the end of the day caters to the flesh and to what our ears want to hear, a nice message. And so we continue to read verse 9. And Yahuwah said to me, there is a conspiracy among the men of Yehuda and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the crookednesses of their forefathers who refuse to hear my words, they have gone after other mighty ones to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Yehuda have broken my covenant, are made with their fathers. Therefore, interesting how here it's two houses, the house of Yehuda and the house of Israel. And he's saying, both of them have broken my covenant that are made with their fathers. And so at the end of the day, are we come back? Have we come back to that place of his covenant, that we are walking in his covenant, in his ways? Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, see, I am bringing evil on them, which they are, n are unable to escape. Then they shall cry out to me, but I shall not listen to them. Now that is a very difficult scripture to hear because we are under the impression that every single time we cry out to the Father, he will just listen and, ob and obey us or listen and do what we want. But you see, when, we, when he is dealing with a constant, constant, constant rebellious people that he has sent servant upon servant upon servant, how many times Yeremiah was trying to warn the people and telling them, you are to repent you are to repent, you are to repent. It is amazing. We want to pray and we want to pray. He would sit and speak to the king and say, all you need to do is seek the father and repent. And yet he would not. Because our arrogance and our pride. Our pride says, well, I am a child of the most high. And because I'm a child of Elua, he ain't going to do that. Well, you know what? I think there's a surprise coming upon many people. Because at the end of the day, he didn't spare Israel. That was his chosen people. Because they would not listen, and they would not listen, and they would not listen. So at the end of the day, why is he going to spare us? And so they shall cry out to me, but I shall not listen to them. 
And so we can turn around and say, oh, but you know what? We don't live in that time of when they had idols. I mean, look, yes, you know what? When Jeremiah was walking through the market, he was seeing all those little idols over there. But understand, there was a lot of other things. There's a lot of other things that we can see as being idols today. If we really sit down and really seek the Father, I'm sure he can show us what our idolatrous ways are because we have many idolatrous ways. We have many things that have become idols in our lives today that one can deem as an, as an idol that was not an idol in those days. And the cities of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall go and cry out to the mighty ones to whom they burn incense, but they shall bring no deliverance to them at all in the time of their evil. For their mighty ones have become as many as your cities, O Yehuda, and you have set up as many slaughter places to shame as there are streets in Jerusalem, slaughter places to burn incense to bowl. And so, you know, there we are burning incense there. They were physically burning incense to bowl. And I'm just thinking now, you know, what is our worship made up of in this day and age? A lot of these places that bring worship to the Father. If you look at the worship leaders... Does that represent worship to the Father or does it represent showmanship where man is being elated? And look at some of these churches and then how they raise up the pastor. And at the end of the day, we must understand there's only one that needs to be raised up and that is Yeshua and that is Abba Yahuwah. You know what? We are all just instruments we are all instruments to be used by the Father, and we all have been given gifts. And you know what? We all have specific gifts, but there's only one head, and the head is Messiah Yeshua. And everything that we're to do in the kingdom is to raise up his name. It's not to be seen. It's not to be heard. It's not to be known. We do not do what we do as servants of the Father because we need to raise up our ministry, because we need to raise up our name, because we need to be seen, because we need to be known, because we need to be heard, because we need to be needed. No. Everything about what the Father has got for us to do is to raise up his name. It's not to raise up our own. It's not about people knowing who you are. It's about people knowing who Messiah or Shoy is. And that is why even when the disciples healed the man, they said, silver and gold have we none, but in the name of Yahushua Mashiach be healed. They might not have known what his name was, but what was important was in whose name was he healed and who got the glory. And so we have a look and we see that Verse 14, and you do not pray for this people. Now look at what he's telling Jeremiah. Now imagine as an intercessor when the Father will turn around and say to you, do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or pray for them, for I do not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their evil. Now you know, beloveds of the King, the Father gave me a prophetic word at the beginning of this year when it was the Gregorian calendar New Year. And the prophetic word that the Father gave me was, many are going to cry out to me because of the task masters that they are serving. They have now served new masters for those that have bowed to the system. So for those that have bowed to this religious system, they are going to cry out to the Father because there's going to be many things going on in their body because of what they've done. And the father said to me, they are now serving a new master. I am no longer the one whom they serve. I am not their master anymore. They have bowed their knee to a new master. They've put their faith and their trust in another master. And I am not their master. And many are going to cry out to me. And then there is nothing I can do. Because what they have within them cannot be removed. And this is what people do not realize. The more we bow to the system, the more we are going to open ourselves up to destruction. Because it's exactly like it was in the time of Jeremiah. 
The people did not. The people wanted to have their way. They wanted to do their own thing. They didn't seek the Father. I ask myself, how many of the people that have bowed their knee to this beast system of taking this, this, um, this injection into their arm, how many of them actually asked the Father if this was his will? Or did they just assume that it's okay? He's just going to accept everything. It's not okay. Why should my beloved be in my house? She has done wickedness with many. And does the set-apart flesh remove your evil from you? Then you rejoice. So you see, we constantly prostitute the father. We constantly behave like the prostitute that is sitting on the side, waiting for him to be able to give me what, he, what I want, and then I want my fees for what he does for me. But yet at the end of the day, I don't really serve him because I love him. I serve him because of what he can do for me. That is a prostitute. You marry the person for what they can give you. You don't marry the person because you truly love them. Well, when, we, when he made a covenant with us, it was so that we would really love him and that we would serve him and that we would bow to him and that he's not our slave and he's not there to be able to answer all our prayers and to be about our needs and our wants. We came onto this earth to be able to be servants and the first servant that we are is a servant of his. We are to serve him and we are to serve our fellow mankind. But we seem to have forgotten that because now we are in a time when man is on a throne. We are on a, the throne of our own lives, demanding and commanding and having our own way. Yahuwah has named you green olive tree, beautiful of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great sound, he set it on fire and its branches shall be broken. So you see, this was a beautiful olive tree. Israel is the olive tree of the Father. But if the olive tree does not want to be able to be grafted into the one to sap from the root of its original root, who is the branch himself of Yeshua and Abba Yahuwah, then what destruction are they going to have coming their way? And Yahuwah of hosts who planted you has spoken evil against you. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Yehuda, which they have done against themselves to provoke me by burning incense to Baal. So do you see, this is all about burning incense to Baal. But now imagine when you are, <laughs> now we, we have the teaching that we are little gods. We are little gods of our own little thrones. And so the biggest idol that we serve is ourselves. And that is the biggest idolatry within the church. The biggest idolatry in the church is I. I am the king of my castle. I have my way and I want what I want. I do not bow my knee. I do not seek the father. I do not seek instruction from him. I do not seek his counsel. I do not seek what he wants. I seek my own way. And, you know, while I'm at that, I'm just going to quickly read as it comes to me now. And I'm sure I've already read it. But I'm just going to read it again because I think we're going to keep reading it and keep reading it until eventually we're going to understand that this is what he wants. Woe to the stubborn children. And I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 30 from verse 1 and verse 2. Woe to the stubborn children, declares Yahuwah, to make counsel but not from me. And to devise plans, but not from my spirit, in order to add sin to sin. So you see, if you're following your own way, and it sounds good and looks good, oh, now I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to do this, and even if it is a church place that you're going to go to, or a Bible um, thing that you're going to run, or whatever it is, and whatever it is that you've decided to do that you did not ask him, what are you doing? You are devising your own plans. Just because it looks good, just because it sounds good, it doesn't mean it's of the Father. 
And this is what we've got to understand. Because you could still be birthing many things out of your flesh. Remember, he talks about the hay, the rubble, and the straw. But then he talks about the precious stones. Only that is going to put fire to all your works. And only the works that is going to be the precious stones, the silver and the gold and the precious stones, are going to stand. And everything that's hay, rubble, and straw is going to be burned up by the fire. Because all of that was the, was the works that, that we have done that we did not consult him that we did not ask his advice, that we thought was a good idea, and we went ahead and we did it. And listen to verse 2. Who are setting out to go down to Mitzrayim and have not asked my mouth to be strengthened in the strength of Pharaoh and to seek refuge in the shadow of Mitzrayim. So you see, what do we do? We go back to the vomit from which we've been delivered. And we turn to the flesh and to the arm of the flesh in order to be able to get what we want and what we need. And these things are going to turn against us soon enough. So let's look at verse 18. And Yahuwah made it known, verse 18 in Jeremiah 11, verse 18. And Yahuwah made it known to me, and I know it. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb brought to the slaughter. And I did not know that they had plotted against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, and let his name be remembered no more. Now this is talking about the crucifixion of Yahushua, about his impalement, about when he was impaled at the stake. It's talking about Yahushua, but this is exactly what they did to Jeremiah who? Because you see, just when Jeremiah was now having rest, they would come and take him and then throw him into prison because they didn't want to hear what he had to say. So you see, let us silence the prophets. Let us silence them. At least if we silence them, let them speak no more. Let us speak against them. Let us come up against them. Let us persecute them because we don't want to hear what they got to say. Because you see, they might just say something that I don't want to hear. And this is why people get offended. Because when we speak truth, then people get offended. The minute you have to tell someone the truth, when they are going astray and you tell them the truth, if you come up against the person who's speaking the truth to you and you get, and you get upset, it's because it's offense. You have taken offense. It's not the other person. You are the one that has the choice whether you're going to get offended. You know what? Like People say, if the shoe fits, wear it. If it wasn't meant for you, then shrug it off. But if it's meant for you and you get offended with it, then you must know that there's a place and an area that scratches. And if it scratches, it means that there's something that is not right. And this is exactly what is spoken of here is what was done to Yahushua. Yahushua came, not speaking Mickey Mouse words. Yahushua came saying, you brood of vipers telling them the evil that they were about and what they did. And when he was speaking the truth, they didn't like what he said. The same as Jeremiah who now is speaking the truth to the people. But because they don't want to hear, they want to silence him. And that is why they killed all the prophets, silenced them. So in this day and age, they might not kill them physically, but they kill them spiritually. And how do they kill them spiritually? They persecute them. They speak against them. They try and silence them. They try to get people to move away from them. And they take them to other places. They say, don't listen to that person. You know what? That person is like this and like this. Because you know why? Because at the end of the day, there's something about what a prophet will speak that that person doesn't like. And this is the problem. Because nobody wants to hear a correction anymore. Nobody wants to hear a rebuke anymore. Everybody only wants to hear a message that tickles the ears. And this is all we want. Encouraging messages of how we can walk in the power of the Father. But yet at the end of the day, where is the messages on repentance? Where is the messages exposing our evil natures? I don't hear them. I don't hear messages of where people are to turn from their wicked ways to turn from the lusts of their flesh and the pride of life and the greed and the everything else that goes with it. And so at the end of the day, it goes more than just obeying his commands. It goes where Galatians chapter 5 talks about the lusts of the flesh and the pride of life. 
So we continue to read in verse 20. But O Yahuwah of hosts, who judges righteously, who tries kidneys and heart, let me see your vengeance upon them, for unto you I have revealed my cause. And so at the end of the day, this is not just going to talk for now, but it's going to be for future. There is a day that the Father is going to bring his vengeance upon the people because of what they have done. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah concerning the men of Anathoth, who are seeking your life, saying, Do not prophesy in the name of Yahuwah, lest you die by our hand. So you see there, they, there you go. This is what they are, will be saying to Jeremiah. So when you watch the movie, you will understand. The minute Jeremiah is saying, this is what's going to happen to you, then they would, they would beat him to silence him because they didn't fear Yahuwah to actually look and see. And you know what is the saddest thing? Even when Jeremiah, whose prophecy started to come into fulfillment, and the prophecies are being fulfilled, yet... They still would not repent and they still did not want to turn. And this is what is so sad. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah of hosts, See, I am punishing them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by scarcity of food. So do you see, beloveds of the king, what is on our doorstep? What is coming? That is why we are reading Yosef. Joseph's story to understand Joseph had to prepare for a great famine. And yeah, we see there's going to be a scarcity of food. Whenever there's war, there's scarcity of food. And there shall be no remnant of them. I will bring evil on the men of Anathoth, a year of their punishment. And so here we see again, as he continues to prophesy destruction. And so you can understand why these people would be upset with Jeremiah, because he's got no good word to give them. It's always destruction. And so people will turn around and say, oh prophet of doom and gloom, you are just a prophet of doom and gloom. You know you are such a negative person, can you not prophesy anything good? How can one prophesy good things when the people themselves only one to do wicked things. And so it's not that the Father doesn't bring deliverance and healing. And so Jeremiah is saying to them, if you would only just turn back to the Father and turn back to his ways, he would relent and he wouldn't have to bring his punishment on you. And that is the lesson for us to understand. We still have time to repent, praise Yahuwah. It's not too late. So let us turn. Let us repent. Let us get our hearts right. Let us make sure that as we look at ourselves through the scriptures here, that we repent and turn to the Father and ask him to search our hearts and find out what are the idolatrous ways that are still there in our lives. What is it that we do that we still don't bring honor and glory to his name? So may Abba bless you all. Shalom, shalom.